இப்ப வரைக்கும் உங்களுக்கு பிடிச்சிருந்தா மறக்காம லைக் பண்ணுங்க ஷேர் பண்ணுங்க கமெண்ட் பண்ணுங்க சப்ஸ்கிரைப் பண்ணுங்க நன்றி வணக்கம் வாழ்க வையகத்தை You have learned that all living cells have to be provided with nutrients, oxygen and other essential substances. Also, the waste or harmful substances produced, have to be removed continuously for healthy functioning of tissues. It is therefore, essential to have efficient mechanisms for the movement of these substances to the cells and from the cells. Different groups of animals have evolved different methods for this transport. Simple organisms like sponges and coelent rates circulate water from their surroundings through their body cavities to facilitate the cells to exchange these substances. More complex organisms use special fluids within their bodies to transport such materials. Blood is the most commonly used body fluid by most of the higher organisms including humans for this purpose. Another body fluid, lymph, also helps in the transport of certain substances. In this chapter you will learn about the composition and properties of blood and lymph tissue fluid and the mechanism of circulation of blood is also explained herein 18.1 blood blood is a special connective tissue consisting of a fluid matrix plasma and formed elements plasma plasma is a straw colored viscous fluid constituting nearly 55% of the blood 90-92% of plasma is water and proteins contribute 6-8% of it. Fibrinogen, globulins and albumins are the major proteins. Fibrinogens are needed for clotting or coagulation of blood. Globulins primarily are involved in defense mechanisms of the body and the albumins help in osmotic balance. Plasma also contains small amounts of minerals like sodium ion, calcium ion, magnesium ion, CO3, chlorine ion, etc. Glucose, amino acids, lipids, etc. are also present in the plasma as they are always in transit in the body. Factors for coagulation or clotting of blood are also present in the plasma in an inactive form. Plasma without the clotting factors is called serum. Formed elements. Erythrocytes, leukocytes and platelets are collectively called formed elements. Figure 18.1 and they constitute nearly 45% of the blood. Erythrocytes or red blood cells, RBC, are the most abundant of all the cells in blood. A healthy adult man has, on an average, 5 millions to 5.5 millions of RBCs in 3 of blood. RBCs are formed in the red bone marrow in the adults. RBCs are devoid of nucleus in most of the mammals and are biconcave in shape. They have a red-colored, iron containing complex protein called hemoglobin hence the color and name of these cells a healthy individual has 12 to 16 grams of hemoglobin in every 100 milliliters of blood these molecules play a significant role in transport of respiratory gases rbc's have an average life span of 120 days after which they are destroyed in the spleen graveyard of rbc's Leukocytes are also are also known as white blood cells WBC as they are colorless due to the lack of hemoglobin they are nucleated and are relatively lesser in number which averages 6000 to 8000 millimeters minus 3 of blood leukocytes are generally short lived we have two main categories of WBCs granulocytes and agranulocytes neutrophils eosinophils and basophils are different types of granulocytes while lymphocytes and monocytes are the agranulocytes. Ne neutrophils are the most abundant cells, 60-65% of the total WBCs and barsophils are the least, 0.51% among them. Neutrophils and monocytes, 6-8% are phagocytic cells which destroy foreign organisms entering the body. Barsophils secrete histamine, serotonin, keparin, etc and are involved in inflammatory reactions. Eosinophils, 2-3%, resist infections and are also associated with allergic reactions. Lymphocytes, 20-25%, are of two major types B and T forms. Both P and T lymphocytes are responsible for immune responses of the body. Platelets also called thrombocytes, are cell fragments produced from megakaryocytes, special cells in the bone marrow. Blood normally contains 1,500,000 to 3,500,000 platelets cubic millimeter. 
Platelets can release a variety of substances most of which are involved in the coagulation or clotting of blood. A reduction in their number can lead to clotting disorders which will lead to excessive loss of blood from the body. Blood Groups As you know, blood of human beings differ in certain aspects though it appears to be similar. Various types of grouping of blood has been done. Two such groupings, the ABO and RH are widely used all over the world. ABO grouping ABO grouping is based on the presence or absence of two surface antigens, chemicals that can induce immune response, on the RBCs namely A and B. Similarly, the plasma of different individuals contain two natural antibodies, proteins produced in response to antigens. The distribution of antigens and antibodies in the four groups of blood, A, B, AB and O. You probably know that during blood transfusion, any blood cannot be used, the blood of a donor has to be carefully matched with the blood of a recipient before any blood transfusion to avoid severe problems of clumping, destruction of RBC. Group O blood can be donated to persons with any other blood group and hence O group individuals are called universal donors. Persons with AB group can accept blood from persons with AB as well as the other groups of blood. Therefore, such persons are called universal recipients. RH grouping Another antigen, the RH antigen similar to one present in rhesus monkeys, hence RH, is also observed on the surface of RBCs of majority, nearly 80%, of humans. Such individuals are called RH positive, RH positive, and those in whom this antigen is absent are called RH negative, RH negative. An RH person, if exposed to RH plus of blood, will form specific antibodies against the RH antigens. Therefore, RH group should also be matched before transfusions. A special case of RH incompatibility, mismatching has been observed between the Rh of blood of a pregnant mother with Rh plus of blood of the fetus. Rh antigens of the fetus do not get exposed to the Rh of blood of the mother in the first pregnancy as the two bloods are well separated by the placenta. However, during the delivery of the first child, there is a possibility of exposure of the maternal blood to small amounts of the Rh plus of blood from the fetus. In such cases, the mother starts preparing antibodies against Rh antigen in her blood. In case of her subsequent pregnancies, the Rh antibodies from the mother, Rh negative, can leak into the blood of the fetus, Rh positive, and destroy the fetal RBCs. This could be fatal to the fetus or could cause severe anemia and jaundice to the baby. This condition is called erythroblastosis fetalis. This can be avoided by administering anti-RH antibodies to the mother immediately after the delivery of the first child. Coagulation of blood You know that when you cut your finger or hurt yourself, your wound does not continue to bleed for a long time, usually the blood stops flowing after some time. Do you know why? Blood exhibits coagulation or clotting in response to an injury or trauma. This is a mechanism to prevent excessive loss of blood from the body. You would have observed a dark reddish-brown scum formed at the site of a cut or an injury over a period of time. It is a clot or coagulum formed mainly of a network of threads called fibrins in which dead and damaged formed elements of blood are trapped. Fibrins are formed by the conversion of inactive fibrinogens in the plasma by the enzyme thrombin. Thrombins Ints, in turn are formed from another inactive substance present in the plasma called prothrombin. An enzyme complex, thrombokinase, is required for the above reaction. This complex is formed by a series of linked enzymic reactions, cascade process, involving a number of factors present in the plasma in an inactive state. An injury or a trauma stimulates the platelets in the blood to release certain factors which activate the mechanism of coagulation. Certain factors released by the tissues at the site of injury also can initiate coagulation. Calcium ions play a very important role in clotting. 18.2 Lymph which is tissue fluid As the blood passes through the capillaries in tissues, some water along with many small water-soluble substances move out into the spaces between the cells of tissues leaving the larger proteins and most of the formed elements in the blood vessels. This fluid released out is called the interstitial fluid or tissue fluid. 
it has the same mineral distribution as that in plasma. Exchange of nutrients, gases, etc., between the blood and the cells always occur through this fluid. An elaborate network of vessels called the lymphatic system collects this fluid and drains it back to the major veins. The fluid present in the lymphatic system is called the lymph. Lymph is a colorless fluid containing specialized lymphocytes which are responsible for the immune responses of the body. Lymph is also an important carrier for nutrients, hormones, etc. Fats are absorbed through lymph in the lacteals present in the intestinal villi, the circulatory pathways. The circulatory patterns are of two types, open or closed. Open circulatory system is present in arthropods and mollusks in which blood pumped by the heart passes through large vessels into open spaces or body cavities called sinuses. Anids and chordates have a closed circulatory system in which the blood pumped by the heart is always circulated through a closed network of blood vessels. This pattern is considered to be more advantageous as the flow of fluid can be more precisely regulated. All vertebrates possess a muscular chambered heart. Fishes have a two-chambered heart with an atrium and a ventricle. Amphibians and the reptiles, except crocodiles, have a three-chambered heart with two atria and a single ventricle, whereas crocodiles, birds and mammals possess a four-chambered heart with two atria and two ventricles. In fishes the heart pumps out the oxygenated blood which is oxygenated by the gills and supplied to the body parts from where the oxygenated blood is returned to the heart, single circulation. In amphibians and reptiles, the left atrium receives oxygenated blood from the gills slash lungs slash skin and the right atrium gets the deoxygenated blood from other body parts. However, they get mixed up in the single ventricle which pumps out mixed blood, incomplete double circulation. In birds and mammals and mammals, oxygenated and deoxygenated blood received by the left and right atria respectively passes on to the ventricles of the same sides. The ventricles pump it out without any mixing up, that is, two separate circulatory pathways are present in these organisms, hence, these animals have double circulation. Let us study the human circulatory system. Human circulatory system. Human circulatory system, also called the blood vascular system consists of a muscular chambered heart, a network of closed branching blood vessels and blood, the fluid which is circulated. Heart. The mesodermally derived organ, is situated in the thoracic cavity, in between the two lungs, slightly tilted to the left. It has the size of a clenched fist. It is protected by a double-walled membranous bag, pericardium, enclosing the pericardial fluid. Our heart has four chambers, two relatively small upper chambers called atria and two larger lower chambers called ventricles. A thin, muscular wall called the interatrial septum separates the right and the left atria, whereas a thick walled, the interventricular septum, separates the left and the right ventricles. The atrium and the ventricle of the same side are also separated by a thick fibrous tissue called the atrioventricular septum. However, each of these septa are provided with an opening through which the two chambers of the same side are connected. The opening between the right atrium and the right ventricle is guarded by a valve formed of three muscular flaps or cusps, the tricuspid valve, whereas a bicuspid or mitral valve guards the opening between the left atrium and the left ventricle. The openings of the right and the left ventricles into the pulmonary artery and the aorta respectively are provided with the semilunar valves. The valves in the heart allows the flow of blood only in one direction, that is, from the atria to the ventricles and from the ventricles to the pulmonary artery or aorta. These valves prevent any backward flow. The entire heart is made of cardiac muscles. The walls of ventricles are much thicker than that of the atria. A specialized cardiac musculature called the nodal tissue is also distributed in the heart. Figure 18.2 A patch of this tissue is present in the right upper corner of the right atrium called the senoatrial node. San. Another mass of this tissue is seen in the lower left corner of the right atrium close to the atrioventricular septum called the atrioventricular node, AVN. A bundle of nodal fibers, atrioventricular bundle, avenue bundle, continues from the AVN which passes through the atrioventricular septa to emerge on the top of the interventricular septum and immediately divides into a right and left bundle. 
these branches give rise to minute fibers throughout the ventricular musculature of the respective sides and are called Purkinje fibers. These fibers along with right and left bundles are known as bundle of his. The nodal musculature has the ability to generate action potentials without any external stimuli, that is, it is auto-excitable. However, the number of action potentials that could be generated in a minute vary at different parts of the nodal system. The sand can generate the maximum number of action potentials, that is, 70-75 per minute, and is responsible for initiating and maintaining the rhythmic contractile activity of the heart. Therefore, it is called the pacemaker. Our heart normally beats 70-75 times in a minute, average 72 beats per minute. Cardiac cycle. How does the heart function? Let us take a look. To begin with, all the four chambers of heart are in a relaxed state, that is, they are in joint diastole. As the tricuspid and bicuspid valves are open, blood from the pulmonary veins and vena cava flows into the left and the right ventricle respectively through the left and right atria. The semilunar valves are closed at this stage. The sun now generates an action potential which stimulates both the atria to undergo a simultaneous contraction, the atrial systole. This increases the flow of blood into the ventricles by about 30%. The action potential is conducted to the ventricular side by the AVN and avenue bundle from where the bundle of his transmits it through the entire ventricular musculature. This causes the ventricular muscles to contract, ventricular systole, the atria undergoes relaxation, diastole, coinciding with the ventricular systole. Ventricular systole increases the ventricular pressure causing the closure of tricuspid and bicuspid valves due to attempted backflow of blood into the atria. As the ventricular pressure increases further, the semilunar valves guarding the pulmonary artery, right side, and the aorta, left side, are forced open, allowing the blood in the ventricles to flow through these vessels into the circulatory pathways. The ventricles now relax, ventricular diastole, and the ventricular pressure falls causing the closure of semilunar valves which prevents the backflow of blood into the ventricles. As the ventricular pressure declines further, the tricuspid and bicuspid valves are pushed open by the pressure in the atrio exerted by the blood which was being emptied into them by the veins. The blood now once again moves freely to the ventricles. The ventricles and atria are now again in a relaxed, joint diastole, state, as earlier. Soon the sand generates a new action potential and the events described above are repeated in that sequence and the process continues. This sequential event in the heart which is cyclically repeated is called the cardiac cycle and it consists of systole and diastole of both the atria and ventricles. As mentioned earlier, the heart beats 72 times per minute, that is, that many cardiac cycles are performed per minute. From this it could be deduced that the duration of a cardiac cycle is 0.8 seconds. During a cardiac cycle, each ventricle pumps out approximately 70 milliliters of blood which is called the stroke volume. The stroke volume multiplied by the heart rate, no, of beats per minute, gives the cardiac output. Therefore, the cardiac output can be defined as the volume of blood pumped out by each ventricle per minute and averages 5000 milliliters or 5 liters in a healthy individual. The body has the ability to alter the stroke volume as well as the heart rate and thereby the cardiac output. For example, the cardiac output of an athlete will be much higher than that of an ordinary man. During each cardiac cycle two prominent sounds are produced which can be easily heard through a stethoscope. The first heart sound, lub, is associated with the closure of the tricuspid and bicuspid valves whereas the second heart sound, dub, is associated with the closure of the semilunar valves. These sounds are of clinical diagnostic significance. Electrocardiograph, ECG. You are probably familiar with this scene from a typical hospital television show. A patient is hooked up to a monitoring machine that shows voltage traces on a screen and makes the sound. Pip, 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 p e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e as the patient goes into cardiac arrest. This type of machine, electrocardiograph, is used to obtain an electrocardiogram (ECG). 
ECG is a graphical representation of the electrical activity of the heart during a cardiac cycle. To obtain a standard ECG, a patient is connected to the machine with three electrical leads, one to each wrist and to the left ankle, that continuously monitor the heart activity. For a detailed evaluation of the heart's function, multiple leads are attached to the chest region. Here, 18.4 double circulation. As mentioned earlier, the blood pump by the right ventricle enters the pulmonary artery, whereas the left ventricle pumps blood into the aorta. The deoxygenated blood pumped into the pulmonary artery is passed on to the lungs from where the oxygenated blood is carried by the pulmonary veins into the left atrium. This pathway constitutes the pulmonary circulation. The oxygenated blood entering the aorta is carried by a network of arteries, arterioles and capillaries to the tissues from where the deoxygenated blood is collected by a system of venules, veins and vena cava and emptied into the right atrium. This is the systemic circulation. The systemic circulation provides nutrients, oxygen and other essential substances to the tissues and takes carbon dioxide and other harmful substances away for elimination. A unique vascular connection exists between the digestive tract and liver called hepatic portal system. The hepatic portal vein carries blood from intestine to the liver before it is delivered to the systemic circulation. A special coronary system of blood vessels is present in our body exclusively for the circulation of blood to and from the cardiac musculature. 18.5 Regulation of Cardiac Activity Normal activities of the heart are regulated intrinsically, that is, auto-regulated by specialized muscles, nodal tissue, hence the heart is called myogenic. A special neural center in the medulla oblongata can moderate the cardiac function through autonomic nervous system, ANS. Neural signals through the sympathetic nerves, part of ANS, can increase the rate of heartbeat, the strength of ventricular contraction and thereby the cardiac output. On the other hand, parasympathetic neural signals, another component of ANS, decrease the rate of heartbeat, speed of conduction of action potential and thereby the cardiac output. Adrenal medullary hormones can also increase the cardiac output. 18.6 Disorders of Circulatory System High blood pressure, hypertension, hyperte hypertension is the term for blood pressure that is higher than normal, 120 AT. In this measurement 120 mm Hg, mm of mercury pressure, is the systolic, or pumping, pressure and 80 mm Hg is the diastolic, or resting, pressure. If repeated checks of blood pressure of an individual is 140 90, 140 over 90, or higher, it shows hypertension. High blood pressure leads to heart diseases and also affects vital organs like brain and kidney. Coronary artery disease, CAD, coronary artery disease, often referred to as atherosclerosis, affects the vessels that supply blood to the heart muscle. It is caused by deposits of calcium, fat, cholesterol and fibrous tissues, which makes the lumen of arteries narrower. Angina, it is also called angina pectoris. A symptom of acute chest pain appears when no enough oxygen is reaching the heart muscle. Angina can occur in men and women of any age but it is more common among the middle-aged and elderly. It occurs due to conditions that affect the blood flow. Heart failure Heart failure means the state of heart when it is not pumping blood effectively enough to meet the needs of the body. It is sometimes called congestive heart failure because congestion of the lungs is one of the main symptoms of this disease. Heart failure is not the same as cardiac arrest, when the heart stops beating, or a heart attack, when the heart muscle is suddenly damaged by an inadequate blood supply.